basic skill boot camp, substitution. In today's lesson, students will solve multiplication and division problems by using substitution. By using what? Substitution. Very good. Okay, so before we begin, we want to go over the word and concept that we're going to be practicing today, which is substitution. Now, substitution sounds like what word? What does it sound like? Does it sound like substitute? And everybody knows what a substitute is, right? Right, okay. So a substitute comes to your classroom when your teacher is sick or sick, okay? So they are a person who comes in the place of the teacher, right? They come in the place of the teacher. So they're replacing the teacher for the day. So who is the substitute that normally comes when I cannot be in class? Who is it? Who is it? Oh, actually, wait, hold on. I think I, oh, I think I see him right there. Hold on one second. Hello, everybody. My name is Mr. Kotran, and I will be your substitute teacher for today. I have one rule. Don't talk when I'm talking. I have actually two rules. Stay in your seat and learn. Right? Mr. Kotran comes and he's a substitute, so he comes in my place. Okay, so in math, substitution is the same concept. So now we're going to define substitution as it is used in algebra. Okay, so we're going to fill in the blanks. The first word that goes in this blank is, what do you think it is? Substitution, that's right. So we're going to write substitution means putting a, and then you're going to write number, in the place of a letter. So go ahead and get that down. Okay, so let's read it together slowly. Ready? Read it with me. Substitution. I don't hear you. Substitution means putting a number in the place of a letter. So let's go ahead and practice a movement that's going to help us to remember what substitution means, okay? All right, so you're going to read the definition and you're going to make these movements, okay? So substitution means putting a number in the place of a letter, okay? Because this is the letter A in sign language, right? And this is a number. This is the number five, okay? All right, so we're going to do that one more time. Are you ready? I know everyone's ready. Okay, here we go. All right. I'm going to say substitution, and then you're going to say substitution. Let's just practice that part, all right? Substitution. Good. Putting a number in the place of a letter. One more time. Substitution. Putting a number in the place of a letter. Very good. So in problems one, two, and three, what we're going to do is we're going to use substitution, right, substitution to solve these problems, okay? And they're all going to look like this, okay? Number one, it says, if x equals 3, then 7x equals what? Okay, so that's what we're trying to find. Okay, so when you look at this problem, what is the number? What is the number? What is x? x is Three, see that red number? Three, okay. So what letter are we talking about? What letter are we talking about? We're talking about what? We're talking about X. So X equals three. So I made the three red and the X red, right? Okay, so then seven X, do you see what, le what letter is red? X is red, yes. So what we're going to do is we're gonna put a number what number are we going to put? We're going to put 3 in the place of the letter X. Okay? So watch. As a visual, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you if I put parentheses around the X. What do parentheses mean? 
Parentheses tell you to do what? They tell you to multiply. So this is saying 7 times x is going to equal an answer. What is x? What is x, my friends? What is x? x is 3. So you're going to take that 3 and you're going to put it in the place of x. Okay, in the place of x. So if you did that, underneath this line you're going to write 7. And in parentheses, because that means multiply, you're going to put what number in the place of x? Which number is this? It is the number 3. That is right. Okay, so then that becomes pretty simple. If x is 3, then 7 times x, or 7 times 3 is... What's 7 times 3? Oh my god, we already don't know what 7 times 3 is. Okay, let's sing the song. Ready? 7, 14, 21. It's 21. Good job, okay? So the answer is 21, okay? All right, let's go ahead and go to number two. This one says, if x is eight, then six x equals. So what do we have to do? When you have a, a letter that is equal to a number, you have to use substitution. You have to use what? Substitution. And substitution is putting a number in the place of a letter. And here the letter is x. Okay? So x equals 8. What is 6x? Well, the first thing you could do is put parentheses around the x. That would be great because it's telling you. You need to put whatever x equals in right here. So x equals 8, doesn't it? x equals 8. So you're going to put 8 right there in the parentheses, and underneath you're going to write 6 in parentheses. What goes in the place of x? 8 goes in the place of x, right? That's right. So you have now 6 times 8, okay? 6 times 8. So who knows 6 times 8? You can use your skip counting chart, or you can sing by 6. 6 is... 6, 12, 18, 24, 30, 36, 42, 48. So what's the answer, guys? The answer is 48. Okay? All right. K number three. If x equals 7, then 8x equals. Okay. So we're going to put parentheses around the x. Put parentheses around the x. And x you know is 7, right? x you know is 7, right? These are the same. And x equals 7. That means that we're going to put 7 in the place of x. Yeah? We're just going to put it right in there, okay? All right, so then you're going to rewrite 8 in parentheses. What goes in the place of 8? I'm sorry. What goes in the place of x? What goes right here? What did I just tell you? It's 7, right? So then 8 times 7 is... What's 8 times 7? Who knows how to count by 8? Come on, people. Count by 8. This one, it was I love you, you love me. Um, 8, 16, 24, 32, 40, 48, 56. Yes? Yeah, I skipped counting by 7. So what is 8 times 7? Remember, 8 times 7 is 5, 6, 7, 8. What is it? 5, 6, 7, 8. And when you say 5, 6, I'm really talking about what number? 56. Very good. So in problems 4 through 6, these don't use substitution anymore. These, these are going to be a review of what we did yesterday, the different ways that you can write division. So we're going to skip a step, okay? We're going to, we're going to skip some steps um, and solve these problems, okay? Remember, now if 8x equals 40, that means that 8 times a number equals 40. So you need to know that this is talking about multiplication, right? 8 times a number is 40. You need to figure out what is that number. So you think, okay, what is the opposite of multiplication? It is division. What is it? Division. 
okay? And this is a fraction bar. What is it? It's a fraction bar. So in order to solve uh, for x, which you're not sure about, right? That's an unknown variable. It's a what? It's an unknown variable. What you have to do is you have to actually divide both sides by the number that is touching x. So we're going to divide this side by 8 and divide this side by 8. So remember what happens when you have 8 divided by 8? What, what is 8 divided by 8? It is 1. So that kind of goes away, right? And now it's the invisible one. And you're left with x. Now here you actually have to do 40 divided by 8. What does this say? 40 divided by 8. So if you want to, go ahead and practice this step, just putting it in the box. 40 divided by 8. 40 divided by 8. All right? So we would skip count by 8. We would skip count by 8. I'll do the tallies over here. It is 8, 16, 24, 32, 40. So how many tallies did I make, guys? I made what? I made 5. So that means that 8 times 5 is 40. So x equals 5, doesn't it? Then you put a box around that. Now, it, an extra step today is checking your work. Because if the opposite of multiplication of, uh, of multiplication is division. Then that means that the opposite of division is what? The opposite of division is multiplication. So it can go the other way. So we check our work by plugging x back in to the original equation. The original equation is 8x equals 40, isn't it? So how can you be sure that x is 5? Okay. If 8x equals 40, does that mean that 8 times, what's x? x is what? x equals 5. So is 8 times 5, does that equal 40? Does it equal 40? Yes. So you're going to put a little check mark at the end. Okay? All right. So let's talk about number 5 then. Number 5 says if 9x equals 54 then what is x equal? Okay, so the first thing you need to do is realize that this is a multiplication problem, and you need to do the opposite of multiplication. The opposite of multiplication is division. So we're going to make two fraction bars. We're going to divide this side by 9 and this side by 9. All right? You have 9 divided by 9 is? What is 9 divided by 9, guys? 1. All right? And so you're left with x, right? The x is down there. You don't have to write x. But we do need to solve 54 divided by 9. So let's solve this problem here. 54 in the box divided by 9. All right? And I'm going to go ahead and make some tally marks and help you out here. We're going to skip count by 9 until we get to 54. Skip count with me. Okay, ready? You can put some tally marks. Okay, so it goes like this. Um, this is, if you're happy and you know it, 9, 18, 27, 36, 45, 54, all right? So I have a tally mark of 5, plus one more is what? It is 6. So we're going to multiply this by 6. So this is saying that 9 times 6 is 54. So then what's the answer then? What is the answer? 9 times what number is 54? 9 times 6. So x equals 6. We put a box around our answer. Now we're going to check our work by substituting 6 for x. Yeah? Okay. So if x is 6, then 9 times 6 should be 54. So we're going to say 9 and x is 6. Is it 54? Is it 54? Yes, it is. Okay? Go ahead and get that down. Okay, so last problem. This one says if 7x is 49, then x equals what? Okay, you're thinking, 7 times what number gives me 49? 
So the way you can do this is what is the opposite of multiplication? It is division. So we're going to do fraction bars on both sides. We're going to divide this by 7, this side by 7, and this side by 7. All right, so 7 divided by 7 equals, what does it equal? Because any number, if it's uh, the same number at the top as the bottom, and you divide, it's going to give you 1. Okay? All right, so now we have 49 divided by 7. So we're going to go ahead and write that. We're going to write 49 in the box divided by 7. And then we skip count by 7 to get to 49, okay? So this is going to be 7, 14, 21, 28, 35, 42, 49. Yeah? So how many tally marks do I have? I have 5 plus 2 more. That makes 7. So 7 times 7 gives you 49. That means that x must be 7. And at last we check. We put 7 in the place of x. I said 7. So 7 times, what is x? x is 7. Does that equal 49? Does it? Yes, it does. Go ahead and get that down. 